to thank you everybody for joining our COBRA Career Talks today. Today we are doing vocational programs offered at CCC and TI. These programs may be offered to students who are in high school as a freshman, sophomore, junior. Um, seniors, it's a little late in the game for you, but after you graduate, there's plenty to offer in this talk as well. So please take notes. Um, our speakers today will be Mr. Justin Harris. He is the Director and Instructor of Energy and Construction Trades. Please help us welcome Mr. Mark Farber. He is the Associate Dean of Vocational and Technical Studies. And please help me join Mr. Marty Walker. He is the Instructor of the Electrical Line Worker Institute. So with that being said, gentlemen, please Take it away and we'll start our presentation. Okay. We're waiting. Okay. Okay. So if everybody can see that in the background there, that Electra uh, automated cutting machine uh, is about worth approximately about a half a million dollars. We had that uh, machine donated to us a couple years ago for our Furniture Institute. Um, and back probably 15, 20 years ago in the furniture industry, uh, anytime you needed fa fabric uh, cut, you either had to have a manual uh, cutter or that used power tools and stuff to actually put the patterns down on the fabrics. And then they would either manually use scissors or hand cutters to actually cut the fabric. Nowadays, we've automated that stuff, and um, a lot of the companies here in Lenore and surrounding areas are using this automated cutting uh, piece of equipment. And um, what it does is it has microchips in there that actually measure, actually put that stores the pattern in its memories, uses lasers and stuff, and actually um, puts the pattern out there, and then you program the information in there, and it'll automatically cut the fabric you know, probably up to eight inches worth of fabric. So you can literally cut hundreds of pieces in just a few minutes versus taking multiple hours. Uh, next slide, please. So that's basically what they uh, we do is uh, we have a 96-hour uh, Con Ed course uh, in automated cutting. You learn how to set up, how to operate, how to program that machine in order to cut the fabrics. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, you see the average salary there. Um, that is in North Carolina. It's about $22 an hour. It's about $44,000, $45,000 a year, which is not bad for this particular area. And then there the, is the employment outlook. And it, does, it doesn't seem like it's growing that much. But once again, that employment outlook is for the whole state of North Carolina. But if you look here in Caldwell County, which has lots of furniture manufacturers, it's probably closer to about 4 to 5% in terms of growth. And then there's a little fun fact is that uh, they're increasingly using these automated cutting machines, uh, particularly for just in time or some of these uh, mass orders that come in. Once again, it's just a matter of programming in there and then you just push a button and it does the work for you. Um, once again, this has been a uh, class that's been requested by our local furniture manufacturers for a couple years now. And we ran a couple courses and um, we, we really haven't had a whole lot of people signing up for it. And uh, we're hoping to get the word out. But uh, once again, that machine is out there. We have it. Um, and uh, we are encouraging folks to come and sign up for it. Next, we have, uh, we've got two programs in our aviation program school. We've got a ground school and an instrument rating. Um, you see there at the top of the job summary is the aviation ground school part. It talks about providing theory concepts. In the ground school, um, this is where you would learn Basically, things like uh, learn about the aviation history, about the weather, about the navigation, about the instruments, about how to talk on the radio to the towers, how to do the pre-flight inspections, uh, what to look for on a plane before you actually get in it and start flying. Um, so that's part one. So if you want to become an actual pilot, you would have to have the ground school, and then you would actually have to go out and get with a flight instructor maybe at Lenore Morganson Airport or Hickory, and then they would actually you know, take you up on the plane and teach you the actual flight lessons, and then you got to pass a test in order to be able to do that. 
But this is part one of it is the ground school. And we actually have that program here at the college. Um, the second one you see there where it talks about instrument ratings, uh, that's designed for someone that already has their pilot license. So if you want to learn how to fly in the clouds or in, in weather, you know, implement weather, rain, snow, or sleep or something of that nature, where you're not relying on your visual you know, landmarks below you, that's what you would need. Now that's supplemental to uh, your pilot license, so it's not a requirement. But um, these are two programs that we offer here at uh, CCC and TI. Um, but once again, if you're looking at actually getting your pilot license, Remember now, the Aviation Ground School is part one. Part two is you actually have to go get with a uh, flight instructor at uh, one of these uh, organizations or flying uh, flying clubs. Do you have a mentorship? Uh, what now? Mentorship. Uh, mentorship in terms of apprenticeship or in terms. Um, we I mean we don't really have apprenticeships in this. Um, so I'm not sure how to answer that question as it relates to this particular thing. Now, if you ask me about pre-apprenticeships with construction and things like that, we have those. But, but for ground schools, once again, uh, it would just be a matter of, of getting with them. And then, of course, they may charge anywhere from $40 to $50 an hour for each flight hour. Okay, next slide, please. And then there's the employment for commercial pilots, uh, growing about 6%, about you know, about as fast as average for all occupations. And of course, um, you may start off by just doing a recreational pilot and where you're just learning how to fly around and go places. And then in some cases, it may lead to some type of career that you're wanting to go a little bit further and maybe fly for an airline or something. Okay. And this is there. Hey, uh, the Lime Rubber uh, program here at Caldwell provides students with a great opportunity to travel, uh, earn a decent salary starting out right out of school. It's a low investment to get started. Uh, our school is around $1,200. Uh, our students can make between 35 and 45 their first year on the job. Uh, it is part of an apprenticeship program with North Carolina. And as you build upon your uh, apprenticeship, uh, it's one of the few industries that I know of that you can more than double your salary in five years on the job. Once you become a class A or government lineman, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, I get emails all the time asking for uh, class A linemen all over the country. Um, the, uh, there's going to be a shortage of linemen. Uh, a lot of the baby boomers are retiring out, just like with a lot of other construction trades, uh, that the need is there. So you, you have a, a very good chance of getting hired even before you graduate, as a lot of our students do. Yeah. You also get a chance, uh, uh, line workers are also considered uh, what we call them, uh, first responder. You know, you have your emergency personnel and law enforcement and those guys when emergencies happen. But you also have the uh, line workers, you know, they have to get out and get on the job first sometimes before the first responders can do their job. Uh, we have people that we have customers that are on life support, feeding machines, and all that stuff. So linemen are very, very important to get the power back on and help save lives. So our electrical systems program here is the beginning of the construction trades uh, items here listed. Uh, it is actually a curriculum program. Um, we have opportunities to earn an associate's degree, a diploma, or a certificate. Uh, Me and electricians. Uh, make up to $22.55 per hour uh, in North Carolina is the average salary. Uh, you're, they're working with things such as uh, you know, lighting control systems, uh, repairing electrical power, uh, doing things in the class such as circuit analysis, uh, commercial wiring, residential wiring, uh, learning, learning things such as industrial wiring, which they're all uh, different in their own way. Um, also, you will learn some National Electric Code uh, and the, the overall cost of the program will depend on the uh, particular route that you choose. Uh, it will, the cost will be uh, dependent upon uh, how many credit hours that you uh, are enrolling in. Uh, the employment outlook uh, is expected to grow about 10% from 2018 to 2028, which is faster than average. Um, as many of you well know, uh, 
we are in desperate need for construction workers, uh, whether this be electrical systems, plumbers, or HVAC technicians, which we'll look at a little bit later. But we are in desperate need of electricians, uh, people to wire houses, uh, repair, do repairs uh, on homes as well. Uh, things that are needed in the industry. Um, and as you see with the fun fact, um, you can have your own business after uh, you know so many hours under a uh, licensed electrician. Um, you can then start your own uh, business and you can become an art entrepreneur and uh, have your own company. You can be self-employed uh, or you know continue working uh, for someone else uh, if you so choose. Next slide, please. Next, we're going to look at uh, general contracting, license prep, and continuing education here at Call Community College. Uh, we do have a, a couple of classes uh, offered for general contractors, uh, one being that of uh, license prep, which is actually helping you um, prepare students to become uh, general contractors. Uh, during this class, it's a 54 uh, intensive hour class. Uh, that prepares you to take the state licensing exam to become a general contractor. Um, this is a course that is, is open to uh, all individuals. Uh, one of the main requirements is that you, uh, for a contractor, is that you uh, are 18 years old. Uh, you, there's several different types of licensing that you can have with a general contractor. You can have a, a limited uh, license, an intermediate license, or even an unlimited license. Uh, which each of those categories will be something that you would have to choose and what you would pick. It would be dependent on the value of the home or uh, item that you're actually constructing. Um, with a, a general contractor, this person uh, hires and organizes all necessary workers, uh, you know, schedules all the subcontractors for the job, um, you know, obtains all the necessary permits, uh, schedules inspections, and complies with all the building codes and that, that sort of thing. Um, we also offer a general contractor's continuing education class here at Caldwell Community College. Um, due to this uh, North Carolina general statute, uh, it is a requirement that each contractor has eight hours of continuing ed every year to renew their contractor's license. This course is basically an eight hour renewal course. It will uh, expand upon different items in the industry, maybe some new technology, maybe some new rules that are being uh, brought forth within the industry and this continuing education class can not only help you with your uh, requirement but it can give you some useful information as you move forward. With regards to salary for a general contractor, the average salary for a general contractor is $45.79 per hour in North Carolina. Many, many times a good rule of thumb uh, to look at this as a general contractor is a lot of times general contractors will get 10% of whatever the new home construction actually is. So let's say you have a, a home that's being constructed, uh, maybe 300,000. Uh, a lot of times those general contractors can bring home up to $30,000 uh, from that job. So it is a very, a very good job, has a lot of responsibilities, but if you're interested in construction, it will be definitely something that you want to uh, look at. Employment outlook um, is expected to grow about 8% from 2019 to 2029, which is faster than average, and there is a definite need uh, in the industry. All right, when we look at HVAC, um, this is a, uh, a position that uh, HVAC technicians install, maintain, and re repair uh, heating and air units. Um, here at Caldwell Community College, we have an uh, intro class, an intermediate class, and an advanced class. Uh, we have three different levels, and um, as you start, we, you learn more as you move, move forward through the program. Uh, the average salary for an HVAC technician is around $21.82 per hour here in North Carolina. And then the employment outlook is expected to go, grow around 13%. Uh, between 2018 to 2028, which is much faster than the average for all occupations. So as you can see with uh, regards to construction trades, um, there is a definite need not only in, in our state but across the country for construction workers. And, and that can, can be someone who's an electrician to a contractor all the way to an HVAC technician. So there's a definite uh, great outlook for each of those positions.
fun fact here, a career in HVAC is basically recession proof. If you think about it, well, there's always going to be a need for, for someone to keep you warm. Uh, there's always going to be a need to keep you cool uh, in the summer. So always remember that in HVAC, this is a job that you will be an essential worker and there's work to be done every day. Very good. Okay, that's back to me with industrial maintenance. So next slide, please. So there's your summary, installs, repairs, maintains uh, factory equipment, industrial machinery, mechanical equipment and buildings and so forth. So if you're kind of mechanically inclined and yet you don't really know what career field you want to go into, this may be something of interest to you. You see what the average salary is there. It's about 17,000, which is about a little over $34,000 a year. Uh, next slide, please. Um, before I get into the employment outlook, though, uh, tell a bit more about that. So uh, in our class, we also have three levels. We have a level one, which is an introductory class, a level two, which is intermediate, and then level three, which is advanced class. Uh, each of them, you know, are uh, roughly 96 hours plus in length. And uh, so you would start one, you know, like in the, uh, the spring and then by December in the fall, uh, you will be finished with all three of them. You get certificates for completion for all three of them. Uh, the employment outlook, it says there is about 5%, but I will tell you this, that in the last class, uh, nearly all of them had, had, a, had a job offer uh, upon completing this. Uh, they get to work on everything from uh, ACDC motors, pneumatics, hydraulics, uh, machinery, uh, PLC, CNC stuff, um, you know, you name it. Uh, they also uh, have to know a little bit about welding, have to know a little bit about HVAC, uh, plumbing, uh, electrical stuff. If you think about it, if you're in a, a factory and, uh, you know, one of the boilers goes out or the AC goes out or if you have an electrical issue or the, or the assembly line goes down, guess who they call? They go ahead and call an industrial maintenance person. They're there and their job is to get that line back up as quickly as possible. Uh, so, uh, once again, we started this, this program started about a year and a half ago and we're real excited about it. Next slide, please. And um, there's the fun fact, they're called jack of all trades because they can do a little bit of everything. And uh, you think about it, this would be a good program to get into if you just want to have a general background in, in overall maintenance. So if you wanted to work around your house, to work on things that uh, mess up around your house, uh, then uh, most likely this is going to be that one program that you're going to be taught a little bit about everything. Next, we have uh, industrial sewing, um, and once again, there's a huge need, uh, particularly here in Colwell County, for industrial sewers. Uh, you see what they do, they operate 10 machines, they learn how to set it up, you know, learn a little bit about uh, how to operate it, um, how to thread it, how to sew straight lines, you know, back edges, things of that nature. Uh, we have uh, 10 brand, practically brand new machines down there. Um, so our cap, sorry, cap, our, our cap rather student cap would be uh, 10 students. Um, and um, once again, the, uh, there is a huge need for it. I'm all the time getting calls from the HR directors at uh, the furniture manufacturers here asking us for uh, qualified people or asking us if they could come down and actually talk to our students in an effort to try to recruit those students. Uh, you see there that uh, if you get on production, your pay can go up uh, exponentially. The employment there for sewers says about 7.4%, uh, which is very good in North Carolina. Uh, once again, that's North Carolina, but if you're looking here in the, the you know, Lenore, Morganton, Hickory area, the metropolitan area, uh, I would say it's probably even slightly higher than that as well. And there's a fun fact right there that uh, generally speaking, because of the, you know, just the number of furniture plants and manufacturing plants here in this area, uh, they can generally earn a little bit above national average in terms of pay. And we've got machining here. You can click on that next one right there. So basically what machinists do is they take a big bundle of steel, metal, copper, uh, brass, whatever you want to call it, and, and they, they make parts out of those things. So they use machines uh, such as lathes, mill machines, grinders, etc., and they produce uh, metal parts. And, uh, and then, of course, the CNC machinist um, cuts the, uh, makes the cuts and drills and, and finishes components to make components for stuff. Uh, believe it or not, um, you know, a skilled person, uh, somebody that's really good at programming, 
uh, can make parts for machine parts. Let's say that something breaks in a machine and you try to contact the, the manufacturer to get it and it may take a couple weeks or a month to get in. Well, a good machinist can actually go and, and actually um, create that part using uh, their skills on those machines and uh, or make a tool to fit something uh, to be able to get something. So they're certainly in high demand. Next slide, please. Um, you see what the range is, uh, 43 to a little $43,000. So once again, all these are very, very high paying jobs. And, um, and once again, there, there seems to be a, a pretty good need here as well. Uh, now, once again, you see that if you look at it, you may think, well, it's, you know, roughly about 1%. Uh, but once again, that's dependent upon the area of the country that you're in. And, um, so if you're willing to move, then the jobs out there, they're going to be plentiful. And once again, they can make anything from machine parts, tools, to bolts, to pistons that go on automobiles or airplanes. Plumbing is another construction trade that we are in definite need, uh, not only within Caldwell County, but across the nation. Um, plumbing is something that everyone has to have. Plumbers install, repair, and maintain plumbing fixtures, uh, systems, residential, commercial, institutional, or public buildings. Uh, the average salary for a journeyman plumber is $23.12 per hour. But let me say this, I've got a couple of friends who are plumbers. And when they go on emergency calls, they are charging $125 per hour to go to that emergency call. Uh, and, and you know what happens? That homeowner will pay for that because they are in desperate need to get their plumbing fixed. So if you're looking for a job, a potential job, as a plumber, you can make really good money and you can work as much as you want to work because there's always something to do in plumbing here within the, the industry. Now, as we continue to look on the plumbing outlook, as you see here, is expected to grow 14% uh, from 2018 to 2028. Once again, is a construction trade that is in desperate need of employment. Uh, one more item here as we look to uh, fun fact, plumbers will always be in the and are not at risk of losing their jobs due to machines. Now, here at Howell Community College, we have three levels of plumbing. We have an intro class, an intermediate class, and an advanced class. Each one of those classes builds upon the experience of the other one. Uh, they take about three to four months to complete, and within a year's time, you can be ready to go to work for a licensed plumber and then head on your way to be a licensed plumber yourself. Okay, it's back to me here with Red Hat. Um, I won't get into this slide really in great detail because it's, it's really highly technical stuff, but just to let you know, um, the analogy I can use here is just like Windows is an operating system for your PCs, Linux is for the businesses. So if you look at a lot of Fortune 500 companies, they use the Linux operating system quite often. And we do offer two classes here at uh, Public Community College um, it's become uh, to be able to work on those servers and to actually become Red Hat, Red Hat certified as a professional. And once again, those are in high demands. Next slide, please. And you see there in the demands, uh, it's it's uh, the salary is uh, quite good actually. Um, now, once again, probably not a lot of Red Hat opportunity here in Caldwell County, but if you're willing to move to some of the larger cities, uh, you're going to have employment out there. Uh, but once again, it is, uh, you see here, they're talking about the Fortune 500 companies, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Google, they run just about anything. Everything runs on Linux operating system. It's the one that uh, seems to be uh, the most common operating system for businesses. Uh, oil Pulsary, we have that as well. And, and the cool thing about uh, learning how to oil poster is once you learn how to do that, let's say that you have a car that you want to do some restoration and you want to re you know, repair the seats. Let's say it's a couch at home that you want to refinish, or maybe that lazy boy recliner. Once you actually learn those skills, you're able to take that and transfer that knowledge that you learned here in the class to your house and actually work on that. But they install, repair the fillings, the covers, the couches, put the pads on, and then staple it into place. Uh, once again, the uh, here in North Carolina, it's about 1741. It's uh, about uh, somewhere around 30, 37, 38 thousand dollars a year. And then, of course, if you get into production pay, which a lot of these positions are here in Caldwell County, you can see that it grows pretty quickly. Um, 
the outlook here is uh, pretty high. Uh, this is just like industrial sewing in that we have a lot of HR directors contacting me all the time and saying that they need old posters. So once again, there's a huge need for it, particularly given the fact that uh, we have some new furniture industries around us. And then of course, just like the industrial sewers, you can see that they can earn above average than the national average up here, particularly if you work in production as well. Um, VMware, so VM stands for virtual machines. So uh, if you can imagine, um, if you had a machine and then what VM does is it talks about cloud virtualization of software. So it's a software program that allows you to put virtual machines on kind of stack into other machines. So you may have one computer, but you may have five virtual computers that's, that's actually inside that other computer. So you're really working with like five or six different units or computers while you're only using the space of one. So, you know, it's very efficient. Um, and, and once again, these are in high demand as well. Uh, it, it's, it's way above there. We have two classes um, in it and uh, it's a strictly, it's an online class. It's eight weeks, uh, runs basically just continuous with holidays and everything, just eight straight weeks. Um, and you want, when you learn, you become, uh, you're eligible to take the exam right there when you talk, talked about under job summary, the VM certified professional exam. Um, and then you can become, uh, you know, certified and stuff. But um, you see it's 11%, which is much higher than, than average. And of course, uh, the pay uh, is just really off the charts here when we're looking at, you know, close to 80 to $170,000 potentially. Uh, started with five, now it has over 20,000. And once again, this class fills up instantly. Um, you know, our, our max is 20 students. And as soon as we get it uh, published and put in, uh, on our schedule, it fills up within just a matter of days. And uh, most of the people that are taking these, since it's completely online, is out of state, to be quite honest with you. We have people from all around the United States taking this class and choosing Caldwell Community College to be able to, to get their uh, training. Here we have welding here. Um, welder, welders join metal together or fill or repair holes on metal constructions uh, through the use of intense heat and gas. And let me make a mention right here before we go further in this slide. We're going to have a separate cover talks about the welding program in general. So if you have more interest in welding as a whole, please tune in to the next cover talks uh, whenever it is for the welding program and you will be able to uh, find even more information about this program. But the average salary here for a welder is $17.67 per hour in North Carolina. We do have a couple of specialty uh, furniture makers in Watauga County and also in Cowell County that uh, welds furniture together and makes these specialty pieces. And so this is a, a growing uh, position here in welding. Uh, all types of designs uh, and modern types of furniture uh, as you look at welding. Um, Next, next uh, one, please. Fun fact, if it's made of metal, it can be welded uh, from cars to planes and bridges to buildings. Welding keeps our economy moving. It is the backbone of our world, and welding is a very, very fun trade. All right, and then uh, this is the last slide that we have here. So uh, next slide, please. You'll see that these are just some of the more popular uh, course offerings that we have. We have uh, it's called automotive taping and pinstriping. So, you know, if you want to pimp that ride, you want to learn how to pinstripe those things, uh, this may be the class for you. It's a 96 hour plus class and it's designed to teach you basically how to, to be able to apply that pinstripe and how to, you know, follow up the curve of the vehicle. And uh, it takes skills and it's a lot of prep materials and knowledge. And, uh, you know, why try to learn that on your own when you could just take a, a course here for 182 bucks and uh, learn it yourself. Uh, same way, car restoration. So you want to learn how to preserve cars, return them to their former glory. Uh, you know, I know that uh, restoring cars is a very popular thing, particularly the muscle cars from the 60s and 70s. Uh, people really just uh, really love those type of vehicles, or any really any car for that matter. But uh, if you're wanting to learn how to actually restore that, uh, to dis disassemble it, take things out, repair, go out and find. Um, how to, to uh, maybe order that stuff, how to restore it back to its former beauty, then uh, this may be the class for you as well. These are 
two really, really popular classes, and we're, we're happy to offer those. And last but not least, uh, Notary Public. Um, so it's a seven-hour course. It, it's just a one-day course, and it provides you the opportunity to become uh, a notary within the state of North Carolina. And uh, uh, once again, these classes fill up very, very fast. We have them scheduled out a year in advance, and uh, you know it's probably uh, the next class uh, that's not full is probably three or four months out. Uh, but we fill up that quick. So. You have any questions for us? Whoa, look at that. Is everyone seeing that? <laughs> Hello everybody. We're back. We're back on track. Um, I, I have so many things to say. I'm so very excited that we were able to hear about these programs. I want to point out a personal story. I have a friend in the plumbing program right now. Um, two months in the program, he had an issue at home with his toilet. The next day, he went to his plumbing class. He asked his instructor, what's going on with my toilet? The cost of the class was $180, OK? My friend was able to fix his toilet after that class session the same day and automatically paid for that class outright just by being empowered to fix his own plumbing. Now you take that and you multiply it by all of these other programs that you're learning about, you're, you're paying these for these programs almost instantly. If it's car restoration, plumbing, welding is a big one. I'm just so excited that we were able to learn about these programs. Um, one question I had for Mark, um, let's say that I wanted to be a pilot, but I, I'm a glasses wearer. Am I still able to become a pilot? Well, you actually got to go pass a physical exam, and part of it is eye exam. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the rating is, or uh, you know if it's you know 420 or whatever, whatever exactly it is, what the requirement is. But there is now I, they do allow you to wear your glasses when you look at those things. So it, depending on how good your vision is with those glasses, uh, at a certain distance. Uh, measured like from six feet away or something, looking on the board, you know the the numbers and the, the letters mm -hmm. and stuff. If you could read that at the standard uh, uh, length of way that you would at, at, at uh, you know optometrist's office, then you should be okay. I think I could do it. <laughs> Any questions? No questions, Jackson. Are you sure? I will say that the programs, many of them that were highlighted are offered after high school. The programs that are offered for career and college promise students in high school, um, into the future, into next school year, that's going to be machining, welding, and industrial maintenance technology. So with all that being said, I'll ask one more time, are there any questions? Okay, I will stop the recording.